bum 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 Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Welcome to a new studio vlog here at Casa del Tuna. If you're new here, hello, my name is Tuna. Happy to have you. I am an illustrator and comic artist hailing from Canada. So this year I am trying this amazing new thing called weekends. I don't know if you guys have heard of them. They're really big in the States. But anyway, I've been trying to take weekends off this year. It's kind of like one of my goals for 2023 is to actually have days during the week where I am not working, I am not thinking about work, I am not looking at my to-do list, and I'm only doing work if I like really want to or it's fun because sometimes the stuff that I have to do I'm excited to do and I look forward to it and if I have free time might as well and will I ultimately think that this will be a good thing for my mental health something about taking time completely 100% away from my work makes me really nervous because it's difficult to pick back up where I left off after two days of not being on. And I haven't had like a normal job for a long time now. And so I don't know if this is true of most people who come back from weekends, but I don't know how you guys have been doing it for all these years because it's hard. I usually make my weekly to-do lists on Fridays. So like at the end of the week, I will be like, okay, what did I accomplish this week? What didn't I accomplish this week? What do I have to do next week? And I make my to-do list and kind of loosely slot it in. I think there's a video from Blogmas where I talk about that in a little bit more detail if you're curious and then at the top of all of my days during the week I go back to look at that list I will make kind of like a daily to-do list from the tasks that I've set out for my day and I'll do that on paper <laughs> but yeah I had to reacquaint myself with my task list for the week it's very intimidating because it's like ah, oh god why didn't I get a start on this on the weekend because you weren't supposed to, Tuna, that's why. So anyway, first thing we've got to do today is film a little sketchbook tour. I post those on Patreon monthly or bi-monthly, depending on how much sketching I'm actually doing. And you saw me set up my table a little bit. I used to be kind of more like, whole, like hey, go a little bit ham when it came to like styling for videos that I was shooting overhead. But a couple of pieces of colored paper and some decorations is more than enough. It just adds like, a layer of effort to the whole thing. I think I, I appreciate people going to the effort, so I might as well too. Hello. But yeah, let's uh, let's get a move on. It's nearly, I don't even know, it's like two o'clock. Let's do this thing.
uh, the sketch for the Nori painting I did and then just I won't even get into that. All right, so on this page, uh, lots of fun stuff. Here. So this next project that I'm working on here is a piece for a series that I call Tuna Eats. I am kind of known on Instagram not only for my illustration, but also my food. I've been posting pictures of the food that I eat like almost every single day for years now, and it a lot is something a lot of people associate with my brand. So I think. Last year, I started this series called Tuna Eats, where I have a food blog, basically, and I illustrate whatever recipe I'm making that month. <laughs> it may sound a little extra, but it's basically my excuse for taking on a personal project. The thing is, is like, I have a difficult time sometimes doing things just for the sake of doing them. So this project is really good for that. I don't have it behind a paywall. It I host it on my Patreon because it's just the most convenient blog style format that I have. Um, but yeah, it's not paid content, so it's just me sharing what I love and having an excuse to draw food. Um, I know that like on Instagram, the algorithm and the people who are, you know, subservient to it have a preference towards things like cute girls, cute animals, stuff with like faces or... I don't even know, bright colors, anime, whatever. Food art just isn't quite as compelling, so it's difficult for me to like make a reason to make food art if it isn't just for the sake of itself. And I know that sounds kind of toxic because I'm not like making work for Instagram, but in the back of my mind, no matter what I'm doing, I'm thinking about, oh, how's it gonna be received? Like, you know, people aren't gonna like this because of X, Y, and Z. And the numbers like prove it, but that doesn't mean that I shouldn't do it, and it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it either. Like, follow your heart. And so Tuna Eats, this project is me following my heart. This month I'm doing chili paste, a uh, Mexican kind of style, and I wanted to just do this flat lay of cute little chili peppers, and they're really fun because they all sort of have their own unique look about them, but it was challenging since the color palette is really limited and I didn't want it to be boring on the eyes so I threw that nice periwinkle blue in the background which is one of my like colors of the month and slapped the red and yellow on top I think it turned out pretty cute oh and I wanted to say that this is like the number one reason I wanted a Mac so I can airdrop stuff from my iPad to my Mac Ugh, it's heaven Hey guys, so it is Thursday now. The last clips were from like Monday or something like that. I have been up to a lot this week. I've completed a few illustrations. I'll pop them up here so you can see what I've been doing. But throughout this week, I have been on the struggle bus, not gonna lie. <laughs> I have been kind of like fighting fighting against the way that I've been feeling and trying to like pretend that it's not there. Um, I'm just like, I'm sad, you guys. And I don't know if it's like, I'm sad or if it's like a seasonal affective thing because let's be honest, sad for January, groundbreaking. And when I'm sad, I don't know about you, I, I, I'm sure you can relate, but like, I just wanna squirrel up. I don't wanna look good. I don't wanna be seen. I don't wanna do nothing. I wanna hang out on the couch, watch TV and eat snacks. As a result of these feelings, I have been struggling as well in like trying to decide what to film. The thing is, is my life is boring and that's part of why I've put off making YouTube videos for so long. And I feel that Vlogmas kind of proved that my life isn't boring when I, you know, like put a magnifying glass to everything that I do. 
But when it comes to these weekly vlogs, I think it ends up becoming really repetitive because it's like, oh, she's drawing again, like, big deal. So that combined with the malaise has made knowing when to pick up the camera and film what I'm doing kind of disfluent. As a influencer on the internet, I feel it is my duty to be a good influence on the people who are consuming the content that I'm putting out. And so when I'm not feeling 100%, it's like, I, can't, I don't wanna be fake, so I can't be hopping on social media being like, everything's great in my life, you guys, don't worry about it, it always is. But I also don't wanna be like dragging anybody down in my bad moods. I don't know, I think it all just leaves me feeling kind of frozen in place. And I guess by filming this little confessional, I'm trying to admit to how I'm feeling. And so if it's out in the open, then we can all be on the same page. Luckily this week I didn't have a ton going on anyway. I have been managing to hit all of my targets. And today I'm actually doing a pet portrait painting. So if I ever needed something to put me in a good mood, there's a pretty good one right there. Now hopefully we can get through this. Uh, I was gonna say without any tears, but we're not at tears. We're at empty feelings. We're at Squidward living in Squidville levels of apathy towards life. <laughs> and I know that sounds grim, but I'm used to this. Like, I'm 30 years old now, guys. I have had ups and downs. I've like, and I've ridden the wave and I know that eventually the wave crashes and I feel good again. So I'm just trying to continue to do my thing, knowing that on the other side, there's, there's something to look forward to. <laughs> If you too are a creative and you've been doing it for any length of time, you know that all, all bad feelings about art are temporary, all art blocks can be overcome, but I wanted to take this time to like talk about some of the ways that I overcome it and some of the stuff I've been doing this week even just to sort of keep myself on track. Now, it is normal. I just want to stress to have ebbs and flows, even a fully seasoned professional like myself, clearly, it still happens. Um, and sometimes the answer is to check out for a longer period of time and like really take a proper break and not even think about art, not even think about creating art. But for me, that's not usually an option. I have deadlines, I have things I need to do. So let's talk about how I find peace and the motivation to continue working. Uh, the first thing I want to mention is if you're going to take breaks, take those breaks with intention. As much as I love lying on the couch thinking about nothing, I think that is maybe not always super productive in terms of getting back on your feet creatively. So when you're breaking with intention, you are breaking with the intention of clearing your mind and coming back later to the problem at hand. So some of the things I like to do, I love shopping. <laughs> I like to go to the mall and browse and maybe buy a few things, get a little bit of that dopamine rush, but it really helps me take my mind off of my work and just enjoy the world around me. I also like to take nature walks, honestly, probably my favorite thing, but I know not everybody has beautiful nature like we do here in the Pacific Northwest. But I really think exercise in general is a great option. I've also taken up running lately, which is like, honestly, I, I wish I could do it like twice a day because it's such a great way to clear my mind and just stop thinking about things and start fresh when I get back. And as well, you could do something really kind of weirdly productive by going to a gallery or a museum, even like the movies and just getting an injection of content into your brain because you can't output good content if you aren't putting in good content. But now let's say you don't have time to go out, you don't have time to take one of these like extended breaks. I highly recommend you optimize your workspace. I am like always happier and always more productive when I know that all the chores are done, my laundry is folded, my kitchen is clean. So if I just can't get the motivation to get work done, I'll take a break and do some chores around the house. Another thing is optimizing your workspace for like the level of sound and the like level of distraction around you. I'm very sensitive to sound, so if I have my headphones on, I sometimes can like encourage that sense of focus that I don't have when I can hear the leaf blowers outside or the garbage trucks rolling by. And if worse comes to worse and you're like, my space will not do today, you can go out, go to your favorite cafe, even go sit outside if the weather's nice enough and try and get some work done in a totally different space than what you're used to. You've taken your long breaks, you've tidied up and found your optimal workspace. Now what 
are you going to draw? Sometimes I think you just need a little bit of momentum. So if you do have a project that you want to do that's like work related that you have a deadline for, you can do some warming up to prime yourself to be successful in that. And I have a few ideas for that. If you're feeling uninspired, I recommend you do something like a draw this in your style challenge because then it takes the inspiration, the actual ideation out of the process and you can just focus on the technique and getting your getting your fingers moving and a dancing on the page. If you're feeling rusty and your work just doesn't look the way that you want it to, do something like a study, uh, do some life drawing, like put your hand in some funny poses and sketch that because then you're just focusing on ob observational illustration. You're not worrying about like whether or not you're doing it well. You're just kind of like doing it for the sake of doing it. The practice itself is the, you know, the process. If you're bored of what it is that you actually have to draw, this is me like a lot of the time when I'm doing something for work, uh, procrastinate by doing something fun. I did this this week by redrawing an old uh, illustration from like, <laughs> should I call it an illustration? A doodle from a sketchbook from 15 or 17 years ago. I redrew it, it was really fun, it was invigorating, it gave me some content to post and it kind of got the, the cogs turning so I was able to do work after the fact. And lastly, if you're just feeling distracted and like you can't, sit down and focus on anything for a length of time, literally set a timer and free draw. So set your timer for like 10 minutes, open up a sketchbook page and just draw for that 10 minutes. Don't stop, don't even think about it. If all you end up drawing is like a bunch of anime eyes, like no problem, that's fine. Because all that matters is now you're warmed up. And now that you're warmed up, if you're still struggling, you can try that timer strategy by doing like the Pomodoro system or simply starting a timer. Uh, Mark always says like, when I'm feeling like I want to procrastinate or I don't want to start something, he's like, why don't you just do it for 20 minutes? Just do it for 20 minutes. And I know that the trick is, is once you start and that 20 minutes is up, you'll have found your stride. You'll be able to keep working and moving along. And so you just want to find these little hacks, hack your brain, you know, and then you'll be able to get shit done. <laughs> I really don't think art block ever needs to be an excuse not to create because you are a cr creature with a brain. You just need to use that brain to trick your brain into doing the things that you want it to do. It's that simple. That's gonna be it for me today here on the vlog, but keep watching because I'm going to an art gallery thing tonight and I think it'll be cool. Hopefully I'll grab some shots and take you with me here, but thank you so much for being here for another vlog. Thank you so much for liking, subscribing, and leave me a comment down below. Let me know what your art block remedy tips are when you are just not feeling the vibe. How do you get over that? I'll be back next Sunday with more delicious content for you all. And for now, enjoy the gallery with me.